Hey everybody, welcome to a Q Computer Channel special presentation. It's been around three years since I uploaded the original Cooking with Intel episode to YouTube. It, I posted it in I believe September 2010 and ever since then that video has received over 100,000 views to date. And I can't remember the exact um, view count but there's definitely a lot of views on that video. And there have been some requests to do a Cooking with AMD episode. So here we have an AMD Athlon 64 3300 Plus. This is a Newcastle. And this particular CPU was having some st stability issues. And, and the, this to be honest with you, it was not overclocked or anything like that. It was just having stability issues. Swapped out the CPU. Stability issues went away on that particular computer. So this CPU is going to be the victim in this video. Now the newer AMDs tend to have thermal protection built in. So we may not see a very exciting episode. If anything at all. But I went ahead and actually performed um, a cooking with AMD episode on an Athlon XP 1600 Plus Palomino Socket A processor. And that went very spectacular. And I'll include that at the end of this video. So you're getting... Um, a couple of AMD CPUs in this video actually. So anyways, um, we got some water applied to this processor and which by the way is already been cleaned and everything so don't try to post comments saying ugh there's thermal paste on there, that's nasty, you, it could, you could get poisoned, you could die. Don't post that kind of stuff. Please don't. So anyways, um, we're going to apply some power and heat it up. And I got some bologna over here too just in case we need it. And surprisingly, it seems like the CPUs perform better as cookers when there's no RAM installed to the motherboard. She's getting warm. There goes her water. We are cooking! What I did here is I recycled the power um, to try to cancel any sort of thermal protection. Guys, we could pretty much call the Socket Zen 54 a slow cooker. I mean, the bologna is sizzling some, but it's definitely not um, cooking it like the um, Palomino CPU did. That one actually burnt the bologna. It was stuck to the die. I couldn't get it off real easily. It's still hanging on. Smells like a stove right now. Smells like I am frying bologna for a sandwich. And we're getting some um, burn marks on the bologna, so it's getting about done. I'm going to flip it. It's starting to stick to the <laughs> CPU. Okay, I'm going to cut it off. Save what what's left of this processor. Have a look at this. Guys, I'm surprised. In my previous attempt, um, which I upload as a blooper, um, I installed RAM to the motherboard. Yet, with the memory installed, the CPU got a little warm, but it didn't get nothing like this. Without the memory, it cooked better. <laughs> it actually cooked better. So for any of you guys who watch my cooking with Intel episodes and comment on there being a RAM on the motherboard, it's actually a benefit. Now I'm going to, going to actually eat this bologna. 
Tastes mighty good. So now I'm going to go get some pepperoni. Okay, I got some pepperoni here. Smells mighty good. There's your shot of it right there. A little thicker than the um, bologna. I say the pepperoni for last because the pepperoni tends to be a bit greasy. A bit messy. So, um, we're going to apply it to our A and B stove here. Which, <laughs> this heat spreader is perfect sized for this pepperoni. And we'll go ahead and repeat what we did last time. Apply power and heat it up. Got my fork ready here. And we're just going to wait for this to start cooking. It's already bubbling. I'll zoom you in a little bit so I can see better. CPU is just hanging on. Now, of course, I would I seriously doubt it would actually work as a computer processor anymore. But it is still hanging on as a cooker. I am surprised. Very surprised. I am quite pleased. Because let's say if something if all else fails, you know, we desperately need to cook something and all we have is an old AMD processor laying around. You can pretty much count on it to cook some food for you. Look at that grease. That's why I waited <laughs> for last for the pepperoni. Go ahead and cut off power. Look at all that grease. Tastes mighty good. So yeah, anyways, um, that concludes Cooking with AMD Episode 1. Now before I show you the footage of the Palomino processor, um, let me explain some things I did here. First off, as I mentioned, no RAM on the motherboard. Without memory on the motherboard, it seems that the um, cooking power of the CPU seems to be better. Another thing I did was I bridged the power on connection to the power supply. That way the motherboard could not turn off power to the power supply. So this way you get constant power going to your motherboard, whether it likes it or not. Now some motherboards have the ability to actually shut off power at the VRM to the CPU. I've seen them do that before. But anyways, um, now I'm going to show you that video footage. It's amazing I took the RAM out, now she's getting hot. Now that's cooking with a CPU. Guys, look at this. It is practically stuck to the die. It actually smells like bologna got burnt just a little bit. This bologna is so thin, it just, I mean, it cooked it really good. So, um, for those who commented on my um, cooking with Intel video about there being no memory on the motherboard, it actually seems like when you not use RAM on the motherboard, the CPU cooks better. I mean, the motherboard didn't even post, but the CPU cooked very well. 
Okay, that CPU's dead. That sure didn't last long. So as you see, um, in these videos, not only are they funny in a way, but they also demonstrate how quickly a computer processor can burn up. Here is the Aslan XP Palomino. It is, or was I should say, a 1600 plus. These here are the remnants of this CPU. Bottom side doesn't look really even affected. This is one of those um, biodegradable CPU packages. The older ones were like ceramic. So anyways, any questions or comments? Feel free to ask and thanks for watching.